The William Pace Show through the years has been a beacon of light in the Midwest, taking you to such destinations as the Navy Pier, the Palmer Hilton Palace Hotel, the German Village, the Showboat Majestic Theater, the Ohio Village, and the Krohn Conservatory. There's always something cooking in the kitchen mm, on the William Pace Show. Some of the biggest stars, entertainers, and political figures like B.B. King, Jimmy Walker, Bob Carlyle, Patty Austin, Mr. T, Whitley Phipps, and Congressman Tony Hall have appeared on the William Pace Show. Now, without further ado, we proudly present the William Pace Show on CATV, coming to you from the heart of the Midwest. The William Pace Show, asking the questions you want to ask. Getting the answers everyone wants to know, it's a new season of the William Pace Show. We're raising the bar with more commitment to educate, inform, encourage, inspire, empower, and help you have your best life. Everyone deserves to have their best life. I'm just staying the course. Here we go. My guest this evening is John Zurich from the Cincinnati Ballet. Thank you so much for coming on today and coming up to Dayton. Thank you for having me. How it's long my have pleasure. You, thank you. How long have you been the executive director? Well, uh, my tenure is still counted in uh, months and weeks. So uh, I started there in January of January. 98. It's been about uh, three months now. January. Yeah. So how does this fit you now? Oh, it fits me real well. <laughs> it's. Uh, yeah, I tell people it's a little bit like coming home because uh -huh. um, my uh, professional career has been a little bit um, eclectic, you might say. Mm -hmm. uh, I've worked in um, commercial theater and mm -hmm. advertising and marketing and uh, also in um, uh, classical music mm -hmm. and um, uh, as well as broadcast production and mm -hmm. consulting. Mm -hmm. So the ballet, in a way, becomes a, a way for me to sort of put it all together in one place again mm -hmm. and, uh, and get back to um, the arts, which is uh, where I began my career. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, I understand you also have a background uh, in working with, with the Philharmonic? Well, Orchestra? Cincinnati Symphony. I uh -huh. worked for the Cincinnati Symphony uh -huh. from uh, 1983 to 1988, 1988 as the marketing director. Okay. Okay. What are some of the things that you want to do now that you're the executive director for Cincinnati Ballet? What are some of the things you would like to do this season or the next season? Well, we've just announced the 98-99 uh, season. And uh, that season actually came together before I started with the ballet. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. But it has a lot of uh, potential in terms of its... Um, potential for drawing uh, a large audience and we want to sell as many tickets as we can mm -hmm. to that season and uh, also from the standpoint of its potential for showcasing our ballet company and helping us to um, take ourselves up take ourselves up yet another notch artistically mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. it's an opportunity for us to um, to improve as a dance company and uh, showcase our ability as a as a ballet company so um, from that standpoint, it's a very exciting season, and we think we have lots of new opportunity for mm -hmm. um, uh, development kinds of op uh, options with the season, sponsorships, and other sorts of uh, unearned income, which are important to the ballet. So mm -hmm. in a way, it's kind of a, um, a turning point season for us. Uh, the Cincinnati Ballet has... Um, has been around for 35 years. This 35 is our, years. This is our 35th mm -hmm. anniversary season. Next year will be our 36th season. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, over those years, it's had a very colorful and, um, and, and really remarkable history. Mm -hmm. um, most arts organizations have had to more or less reinvent themselves over the last um, five to ten years, and uh, that includes Cincinnati Ballet. Uh, Cincinnati Ballet has had to face many uh, financial challenges and audience development challenges, which I think it has faced uh, quite admirably uh, in the years just prior to my joining the ballet. Mm -hmm. Let me ask you, as executive director, what are some of your duties there? Well, <laughs> I bet, are they varied? Uh, uh, yes, it, no okay. two days are the same. Two it's, days, okay. It's a very interesting job. but. From the standpoint of the job description, um, I'm responsible for all administrative uh, functions mm -hmm. of the organization. Um, I'm responsible for um, uh, liaison type relations with the board of trustees and the volunteers. Um, 
also for all the uh, union relations, uh, union negotiations and contract relations with mm -hmm. not only the dancers, which uh, uh, are um, a, an important collective bargaining uh, source for us, but also stagehands and wardrobe and teamsters. Uh, we deal with several mm -hmm. unions and I'm responsible for uh, relations with all the unions. And I manage a staff of um, uh, which is divided into, you know, critical departments, mm -hmm. marketing, development, finance, uh, and administrative departments, and education. Mm -hmm. You know, more and more um, they say that when a person buys a ticket, say to the to an uh, arts event, that that ticket doesn't really cover the total cost of, of the event. So is that true particularly with the ballet too? Oh yeah. Um, you know, the the um, like the ticket covers like maybe uh, one half of the expense or something like that, and you have to count upon donors and contributors right. for the other half. Our total annual budget is about three and a half million dollars, mm -hmm. and our total ticket sales are uh, about one point five million dollars oh. in round numbers. So okay. uh, our ticket sales cover less than fifty percent of our expenses. Expenses. Okay. And the other fifty percent is covered by uh, what we call unearned income. And mm -hmm. uh, in the unearned income category, we have such things as sponsorship revenues, grant uh, mm -hmm. income, uh, foundation income, uh, endowment earning, um, and so on. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the ticket, the ticket uh, price really covers uh, uh, a small fraction of the total cost of presenting a ballet company. I want to talk uh, lastly about um, what's going to be the highlights for next season. I want to talk about that a little okay. bit. Uh, next season, we have five, um, five subscription series okay. ballets scheduled and our annual Nutcracker production. Mm -hmm. We open the season with uh, a, ba a ballet called Lady of the Camellias, okay. which is um, uh, based on the Alexander Dumas novel mm -hmm. uh, that inspired the movie Camille, featuring mm -hmm. Greta Garbo, and also inspired oh, Verdi's opera La Traviata. Uh -huh. uh, it's a wonderful ballet by a great choreographer. We follow that up with what we call a Salute to Youth, which is a youth-oriented program that uh, um, is very much a family and uh, young persons type uh, series of shorter ballets. Mm -hmm. uh, then we have the Nutcracker, which is our annual production that we do mm -hmm. in Music Hall every year. We follow that with Valentine's Day, uh, a Valentine's festival that takes place on Valentine's Day weekend mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that is, um, uh, again, a uh, what we call a mixed rep program of three different ballets, all focused on love type themes. And then Sleeping Beauty, which is our full length um, family ballet, and set to the music of Tchaikovsky, a wonderful, uh, wonderful production. And then we finish the year with Butterfly, oh, which is the, um, the ballet version of Madame Butterfly. Wonderful. And also a wonderful, beautiful, powerful uh, ballet. So tell us, if we'd like to subscribe for tickets, give us a number. Area code 513-621-5219. Okay. okay, great. Thank you so much for coming up to Dayton and for being on the show. And Thank you we for can't, having me. can't let you leave without a little present here, a little gift here. It's one of Dayton's finest, a box of Esther Price Fine well, Chocolates. Thank, you. thank, thank you. you so much for coming on. Thank My you. pleasure. There's more to come. Stay with us. Subscribe to the William Pace Show YouTube channel. Be sure to click the bell and give us the thumbs up. Thank you. The William Pace Show through the years has been a beacon of light in the Midwest, taking you to such destinations as the Navy Pier, the Palmer Hilton Palace Hotel, the German Village, the Showboat Majestic Theater, the Ohio Village, and the Crone Conservatory. There's always something cooking in the kitchen. Mm on The William Pace Show. Some of the biggest stars, entertainers, and political figures like B.B. King, Jimmy Walker, Bob Carlyle, Patty Austin, Mr. T, Whitley Phibbs, and Congressman Tony Hall have appeared on The William Pace Show. Now, without further ado, we proudly present The William Pace Show on CATV, coming to you from the heart of the Midwest. Subscribe to The William Pace Show YouTube channel be sure to click the bell and give us the thumbs up. Thank you.
on our talent segment tonight, we're spotlighting a young lady by the name of Deborah Foster Newsome. Thank you so much for coming on tonight. Thank you for inviting me. Now, how long have you been singing? I say I really started singing around the age of eight years old. Eight years old. So you knew then that you wanted to be a singer. I probably knew when I was maybe three years old. You knew that. That I wanted to be a singer. They couldn't hush you up? Mm -mm. No. <laughs> uh, it kind of started with my great-grandfather. He was, he loved music, all kinds uh -huh. of music. And uh, he was in love with that song, Put On Your Red Dress, Baby, because oh. we're going out tonight. <laughs> and uh, so he took me downtown and he bought me a red dress and some red shoes. Uh -huh. And he brought me back home and he had my grandmother to put my, that dress on and those shoes. And I just danced and cut up oh, all okay. night. And I just kind of had a feeling then that singing was just going to be a part of me. It was in your spirit. It was just in my spirit, truly. So. Who were some of your influences in your life that made you uh, contribute towards your desire to want to perform, to want to sing? Well, I really came from a musical family. I have uh, uncles and cousins, and I oh, understand okay. that my great-great-grandfather played with the big bands. Oh, okay. So I think it's just something that I inherited. Mm -hmm. And uh, at, the, at a very young age, I know I'm probably telling my age now, but uh, <laughs> the staple singers, so back in the uh -huh. day with Mavis Staples, uh -huh. you know, I could just hear her and something just goes through my body, you know. She was mm -hmm. one of those people that she could just hit those certain notes and she just had that anointing, mm -hmm. I felt. And Aretha, oh, Aretha you know, Franklin. when Aretha was singing yes. gospel, <laughs> yeah, and uh, I could just feel something when... Oh, you know. yeah, the spirit in her, her singing is, is, is obviously yes. there. Yes. Um, you know, and we're talking about spirit and so forth. There's always in music something that you want to get across to people. Mm -hmm. What message is it that you, in your music that you're trying to get across to people? Well, uh, now that I'm in the gospel, because I used to sing R&B and, mm -hmm. you know, I just kind of like to do the Anita Baker or whatever was mm -hmm. out at that time, the Whitney Houston. But since I started singing gospel and, and I've uh, dedicated my life to the Lord, the message that I'm trying to get across now is with Jesus Christ, anything's possible. Oh, yes, I believe that. Anything and everything really is do. possible if you humble yourself mm -hmm. and if you put the Lord first mm -hmm. in your life because I'm a living witness that if you really humble yourself, he will give you all the desires of your heart. And if you sure. show him that you are really true about uh, just doing the right thing and trying to live right and mm -hmm. it's nothing that happens overnight. Oh, no. You know, and it's no. a personal thing. Mm -hmm. So it's a one-on-one -on -one thing. I think everybody has to do it in their own way, within their own time. Mm -hmm. But uh, ever since I made up my mind, that's what I want to do. I really want to live for him. Mm -hmm. And um, since I've been singing, I've been singing for a long time, William, but over the past couple of years since I've been singing with the Right Pack Gospel Choir, I've been hearing anointed. Mm -hmm. That word just keeps coming to me from everybody. Mm -hmm. Anointed, Debbie, you are anointed. Mm -hmm. And um, I always felt that I could sing, mm -hmm. you know, that was one thing. But feeling the anointing was mm -hmm. different. And one day, I think maybe I was performing, I can't really m remember where I was performing that night, but all of a sudden it just really just kind of hit me. Mm -hmm. I started off singing, but somewhere in the midst of it all, he took over. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the moment that I really understood mm -hmm. what they meant by the anointing. Mm -hmm. And after that, it's just like everything else was just whatever your will is. Mm -hmm. And I think another thing that really takes people back is when they see a person of a very small statue singing with a really big voice. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of times when I was singing with the gospel choir, you know, we go places and it's like, yeah, the little one, I remember the little one, you know. Uh -huh. And it's just something about, I think, a little person, mm -hmm. just like Melba Moore or, right. you know, yes. Stephanie Mills. Right, you all know, those The first people. time I saw mm -hmm. them, I was just awed. How this big voice could come out of such a little small, small person. person. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. Now I want to talk a little bit about the album. You're working on an album. Yes. And who's helping you with the uh, album project? Well, my uncle, uh, Reverend Emmett Foster mm -hmm. from Cleveland, Ohio, he's the pastor of Bethel AME Zion Church. Mm -hmm. He has wrote the first single, Have Mercy on Me. Oh, okay. He's also writing a duet that we plan on doing together mm -hmm. on the album. So there's new new repertoire. There's going to be some, yes, mm -hmm. yes, some new, new things. And then I'm going to do some remakes. Mm -hmm. There's going to be some remakes that I want to do. One was my mom's favorite song. I'm going to do what one of that? hers. 
um, because he lives. Oh, okay. Yes, because yeah, he lives. So that, that is definitely going to be on I the I love uh, that. Yes. So my uncle's helping me out a lot. And uh, the Wright Pat Air Force Base Gospel Choir, I've been with them for six years now. Mm -hmm. And so I can pick and choose. You know, mm -hmm. I have voices, and any, and really, I think everybody's going to be a part of the project. I think everybody in the choir wants to be a part of the project. Mm -hmm. So somehow or another, we're going to have everybody in there involved, too. And then um, Danny Smith, who is um, the president of Ruckus Entertainment Time mm -hmm. Slot Recording Studio okay. in Springfield. Mm -hmm. He's already working on some of the music okay. for me. So Danny is helping me out a lot. So things are progressing then. Yes, it's they just are. Just a matter of time before yes, the album will be out. Yes, um, um, I want to thank you for coming on. And in, in a little bit, Deborah's going to be back to sing for us yes. a song or two. So you want to stay with us. And I want to give you a box of Esther Price Fine Chocolates. Well, thank you. We'll be back in a moment with Deborah. Stay with us. The William Pace Show through the years has been a beacon of light in the Midwest taking you to such destinations as the Navy Pier, the Palmer Hilton Palace Hotel, the German Village, the Showboat Majestic Theater, the Ohio Village, and the Crown Conservatory. There's always something cooking in the kitchen mm, on the William Pace Show. Some of the biggest stars, entertainers, and political figures like B.B. King, Jimmy Walker, Bob Carlyle, Patty Austin, Mr. T, Whitley Phipps, and Congressman Tony Hall have appeared on the William Pace Show. Now, without further ado, we proudly present the William Pace Show on CATV, coming to you from the heart of the Midwest. On our talent segment, we're spotlighting Deborah Foster Newsom and Friends for Christ. So what are you going to sing for us tonight? Praise Jehovah. Wonderful. Deborah Foster Newsom and Friends for Christ.
show youtube channel be sure to click the bell and give us the thumbs up thank you the william pace show through the years has been a beacon of light in the midwest taking you to such destinations as the navy pier the palmer hilton palace hotel the german village the showboat majestic theater the ohio village and the crone conservatory there's always something cooking in the kitchen mm, on the william pace show some of the biggest stars, entertainers, and political figures like B.B. King, Jimmy Walker, Bob Carlyle, Patty Austin, Mr. T, Whitley Phibbs, and Congressman Tony Hall have appeared on The William Pace Show. Now, without further ado, we proudly present The William Pace Show on CATV, coming to you from the heart of the Midwest. Subscribe to The William Pace Show YouTube channel. Be sure to click the bell and give us the thumbs up. Thank you. Gotta go. I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.